Hello, it's Eric Strong from Strong Medicine, and today I'm discussing DRESS. In brief, DRESS is an acronym that stands for Drug Reaction with Eosinophilia and Systemic Symptoms. In short, it's a severe, potentially fatal drug reaction with prominent skin manifestations and which can cause multi-organ failure. Let's start with a clinical presentation. The typical onset is two to six weeks after initiation of the causative medication with a mean delay of three weeks. This is a bit longer than most serious adverse drug reactions. The most readily apparent clinical manifestations are those of the skin, which can take a very wide variety of different appearances, including a morbilliform maculopapular rash. The word morbilliform literally means a rash that looks like measles. Other possible skin manifestations include pustules and vesicles, facial edema, erythroderma, which is a diffuse generalized inflammation of the skin, and purpura. Among the systemic manifestations, the most common and earliest to appear is fever, which can be observed several days before the skin manifestations develop. Others include lymphadenopathy, various hematological abnormalities, including eosinophilia, leukocytosis, and the presence of atypical lymphocytes, and most notably, dress can cause organ dysfunction, roughly in decreasing order of prevalence, liver, ranging from modest LFT elevation to acute hepatic failure, kidneys, including asymptomatic proteinuria, interstitial nephritis, and kidney failure, lungs, including pneumonitis and ARDS, and the heart, manifesting as a myocarditis. The pathogenesis of DRESS is not well understood, but it appears to be a T-cell-mediated hypersensitivity reaction. DRESS has been strongly associated with the reactivation of viruses from the herpes viridae family, particularly HHV6. However, the specific nature of this association is unclear. Regarding which meds can trigger DRESS, the most commonly implicated include allopurinol, aromatic anticonvulsants, which include phenytoin and carbamazepine, among others, sulfonamides, including Bactrim and sulfazalazine, the antibiotic vancomycin, and the HIV medication nevirapine. Other less commonly reported meds include beta-lactams, NSAIDs, dapzone, omiprazole, olanzapine, and fluoxetine. Some data suggests that different drugs can lead to different clinical syndromes within the spectrum of DRESS. For example, the observation that DRESS caused by alpurinol is more likely to be life-threatening. When it comes to making a diagnosis of DRESS, there is no pathognomonic test result or biopsy finding. The diagnosis is a clinical one made by a combination of skin findings, labs, and a consistent medication history. Although several roughly similar sets of specific diagnostic criteria for DRESS have been proposed, no one set of criteria has become the consensus standard. As a representative of what these criteria look like, here's just one of them. For this criteria, all three of the following features must be present in order to diagnose stress. A cutaneous drug eruption, either eosinophilia or atypical lymphocytes, and at least one manifestation of acute systemic disease among those that I mentioned earlier, with the exception of fever. Due to the wide spectrum of cutaneous and systemic findings, and the longer than average delay between drug initiation and symptom onset, Diagnosing DRESS is not always straightforward, and it can be mistaken for a number of other conditions. These include other forms of cutaneous drug reactions, including a common isolated morbilliform drug reaction, which is a maculopapular rash, predominantly on the trunk, often colloquially referred to as a drug rash. Also on the differential diagnosis are the less common but far more serious conditions of Stevens-Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis. The fever and multi-organ dysfunction seen in DRESS can mimic sepsis. The combination of rash, fever, and lymphadenopathy can mimic a variety of acute viral illnesses, especially in children. The cutaneous manifestations of DRESS can sometimes look like cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, including Cesare syndrome. Prominent eosinophilia can alternatively suggest one of the hyper-eosinophilia syndromes. And the combination of rash, fever, and multi-organ dysfunction can also be seen in lupus. Treatment options in DRESS are relatively few, and none have been rigorously studied. First, for all patients, 
the clinician must identify and immediately stop any potentially causative medication and should avoid any new meds if possible, particularly those of a similar class or those with an established high risk of causing dress while the patient is recovering. If the patient has mild to moderate cutaneous manifestations with or without mild LFT elevation and no other organ dysfunction, topical steroids for symptomatic relief is typically all that's necessary beyond medication cessation. For patients with severe cutaneous disease and or organ dysfunction, systemic glucocorticoids such as oral prednisone or IV methylprednisolone are the first line. If that's insufficient, then cyclosporine and or IVIG can be tried. I'll end with prognosis. The mortality rate from DRESS is a non-trivial 5-10%. to 10%. The mechanism of death is most commonly reported to be liver and or cardiac failure. Among survivors, full recovery takes an average of six weeks from cessation of the causative medication. During recovery, relapses are common, often triggered by the tapering of steroids. And even after full recovery, patients remain at an increased risk of recurrent dress, including that triggered by meds which are structurally dissimilar to the original culprit. They also have a higher risk of subsequently developing autoimmune disease. Whether these increased risks are because of a common genetic susceptibility to both autoimmune disease and DRESS in general, such as HLA polymorphisms, or whether they are the result of a permanent alteration to their immune system caused by the original DRESS episode is unclear. That's it for this brief introduction to DRESS or drug reaction with eosinophilia and systemic symptoms. If you found it interesting or helpful, please consider subscribing to Strong Medicine and checking out other videos in this series on underappreciated diseases.